Hi my dear readers, this is Simona Rich. I'm a bit more organized today because I wrote down the topics that I would like to talk about and this is going to be a um, personal update made up of different subjects. I wanted to talk about some subjects for some time but because I'm so busy now with land work that I didn't find an opportunity to make a video but now I thought I must make a video but I'm really working and I'm digging places for making beds for vegetables and I'm making some raised beds but uh, now I'm just making one. It's a lot of work actually. So I'm going to plant some vegetables in normal beds and some will be in raised beds. But I think I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, what's happening in my life after I discuss some of the other subjects and they're going to be about mindfulness. Firstly, I would like to talk about something that I heard Eckhart Tolle mention and I love listening to his uh, videos when I can. And um, in one video, he told about knowing one school teacher who was in her element. She was teaching children and she was excellent at her work and her life looked so good like she was doing what she was supposed to do yet she had this dream of becoming an actress and she didn't succeed in becoming one so this made her overlook what she had and to focus on what she didn't have and so she herself made her life unhappy and there are so many people who do that they are where they are supposed to be and instead of making the best of that and mastering that and enjoying that they have this dream of the masses of becoming an actor becoming rich owning this having this kind of relationship so instead of enjoying what they already have they make themselves miserable because they don't have this kind of common dream. This is so sad. People should enjoy their uniqueness. We are all in unique circumstances and some of us have this kind of advantage. Some of us have that kind of advantage. Some of us have more time but have less money. Some of us have less time but we have more money and we can all make the best out of what we have but unfortunately what happens is that people have these kind of dreams that they, they watch the news i mean they watch the tv and uh, they see this kind of uh, package lifestyle and because they are exposed to it so many times that they aim for it they think this is it but we all have unique roads to walk on we have unique purposes of our life so we should embrace that and this ties into another subject that I wanted to discuss and that's to do with just being totally okay with what you are what you have with the circumstances that you're in and then you will be led to what you're supposed to do so i very often get my clients asking uh, what kind of career does my birth chart show is good for me uh, what should i do in my free time what kind of activity i can take take up what the hobby should i take up but actually if you are just at peace with where you are and you totally accept it you don't have to be happy with it but you should accept it because that's what you have then you will be led to exactly what you're supposed to do and uh, we sh we are always having the kind of activity that is um there to help us gain some kind of skill or to train us out of something to make us um, overcome some kind of fault that we have so we all are already doing what we are supposed to do we should just stop 
uh, resisting because when we are resisting then we prolong that time of learning but if we accept where we are what we are doing and see what lessons there are for us then we can quickly progress to something else but yes we are where we are supposed to be all of us are in in exactly the circumstances that we are supposed to be and very often i find people who are complaining about uh, where they are but they keep failing to learn the lessons that that place has for them and therefore they are kept in that place so they should accept where they are because it's not like they are there they don't they deserve something better but they are for some reason stuck there it's never like this we are where exactly where we are supposed to be life is not our enemy it places us where we are supposed to be so that we can either learn new skills or uh, we can overcome some kind of um, character faults that we have and once we do then we are freed and we can move on to something else actually i discussed most of the things that i want to discuss in so such a short time so that's great and also i would like to share with you a wonderful lesson that i read last night before sleep uh, which is from a course in miracles so now i'm on lesson 192 of a course in miracles and in total i think there are 364 lessons if i'm not mistaken so here is the lesson and excuse me there will be some christian terms if you're not familiar with this course but it's not a christian uh, book it's kind of like esoteric christianity but i'm not a christian so the lesson's name is I have a function God would have me fill. It is your father's holy will that you complete himself and that yourself shall be his sacred son forever pure as he of love created and in love preserved extending love creating in its name forever one with God and with yourself. Yet what can such a function mean within a world of envy, hatred and attack? Therefore you have a function in the world in its own terms. For who can understand a language far beyond his simple grasp? Forgiveness represents your function here. It is not God's creation, for it is the means by which untruth can be undone. And who would pardon heaven? Yet on earth you need the means to let illusions go. Creation merely waits for your return to be acknowledged, not to be complete. Creation cannot even be conceived of in the world. It has no meaning here. Forgiveness is the closest it can come to earth. For being heaven born, it has no form at all. Yet God created one who has the power to translate and form the holy formless. What he makes are dreams, but of a kind so close to waking that the light of day already shines in them, and eyes already opening behold the joyful sights their offerings contain. Forgiveness gently looks upon all things unknown in heaven, sees them disappear, and leaves the world a clean and unmarked slate on which the word of God can now replace the senseless symbols written there before. Forgiveness is the means by which the fear of death is overcome because it holds no fierce attraction now and guilt is gone. Forgiveness lets the body be perceived as what it is, a simple teaching aid to be led by when learning is complete but hardly changing him who learns at all. The mind without the body cannot make mistakes. It cannot think that it will die, nor be the prey of merciless attack. Anger becomes impossible, and where is terror then? What fears could still assail those who have lost the source of all attack? the core of anguish and the seed of fear, which is the body. Only forgiveness can relieve the mind of thinking that the body is its home. 
Only forgiveness can restore the peace that God intended for His Holy Son. Only forgiveness can persuade the Son to look again upon His holiness. With anger gone, <clears throat> who will indeed perceive that for Christ's vision and the gift of sight no sacrifice was asked and only pain was lifted from a sick and tortured mind? Is this unwelcome? Is it to be feared? Or is it to be hoped for, met with thanks and joyously accepted? We are one and therefore give up nothing but we have indeed been given everything by God. Yet do we need forgiveness to perceive that this is so. Without its kindly light, we grope in darkness, using reason but to justify our rage and our attack. Our understanding is so limited that what we think we understand is but confusion born of error. We are lost in mists of shifting dreams and fearful thoughts, our eyes shut tight against the light, our minds engaged in worshipping what is not there. What can be born again in Christ but Him who has forgiven everyone He sees or thinks of or imagines? Who could be set free while He imprisons anyone? A jailer is not free, for he is bound together with his prisoner. He must be sure that he does not escape, so he spends his time in keeping watch on him. The bars that limit him become the world in which his jailer lives along with him. And it is on his freedom that the way to liberty depends for both of them. Therefore hold no one prisoner. Release instead of bind, for thus are you made free. The way is simple. Every time you feel a stab of anger, realize you hold a sword above your head. And it will fall or be averted as you choose to be condemned or free. Thus does each one who seems to tempt you to be angry represent your savior from the prison house of death and so you owe him thanks instead of pain. Be merciful today. The Son of God deserves your mercy. It is he who asks that you accept the way to freedom now. Deny him not. His Father's love for him belongs to you. Your function here on earth is only to forgive him that you may accept him back as your identity. He is as God created him and you are what he is. Forgive him now his sins, and you will see that you are one with him. So very often in this course, it asks us to forgive because that's the only way to be freed from this earth, from this illusion. Because if we hold anyone guilty, if we judge anyone, we are judging ourselves, we are holding ourselves guilty, and where we belong there is no guilt so we are holding ourselves prisoners here because we are all one we are all one consciousness so if we can't forgive one person we can't forgive ourselves and we are keeping ourselves in bondage and i really liked also previous lesson that but i'm not going to read it out and maybe i will just summarize what that previous lesson told so basically it says that it said that we are kept in our own prison if we, how to say, if we carry over what happened during one hour into another. So we're keeping this illusion going and we are keep being bound by time and to escape from time in this existence that has time is through not holding on to something that happened to us at a particular time so for example if an hour ago someone made you upset don't carry this over into another hour just that moment they made you accept uh, they made you uh, upset but then the next moment comes and it's a fresh moment so to escape from time into timeless you have to not carry over those things 
because that's how you make time so if you want to experience this eternal timeless now that we are all all living in we should not allow the minds to extend what happened to us and just live in the moment when thing happened it's like for animals something happens and they don't dwell on it the next moment they are happy if something upsetting happened an hour ago they totally forgot it they are in the moment and this what helps us and this what will make us go into timeless experience timelessness and then there is no fear of death there are boundless opportunities you're just wide open into the present moment and then you perceive everything as it is without the clouds of the mind without the clouds of thoughts and beliefs so this is how you can really see this is such an empowering message i love it so much and reading a course in miracles before sleep makes me so at peace and then it also reminds me not to think but just before sleep just be totally aware of everything of this atmosphere in the room of my breathing of the sounds and this is i don't know it just makes me so happy and then i can relax so fast and i sleep so well when i don't think before sleeping and i in general practice being in the now being present and not being lost in thought and this is really the key to happiness and then you are grateful for small things you don't need big things in life to be happy you appreciate little things of life like today I was walking with a dog to the shop like always I do here and it was just so beautiful the sky in the distance was getting more intense blue with mixed with gray and against this background there was a tree that had bright green leaves and it just looked like someone painted this beautiful picture and i just i just couldn't take my eyes off it it was so beautiful so you kind of you're awake when you're not thinking you're awake into what is now and you appreciate these things and even now my garden is so beautiful it's i already showed picture in my article and in a previous video that it looks like now there is a carpet yellow carpet and there are white flowers here and there and it just looks so beautiful so when you don't think when you're in the now you're aware of these magical things god is the greatest creator god is the greatest painter so to speak because every day has something so unique for example the sky every day is different and it's just i'm so grateful it's just so beautiful so every day i appreciate the beauty of nature i'm so happy to be in nature even when it's 9 p.m. actually now it's 9 p.m. 9 10 or something like this i can hear even birds chirping here it's just I love being in nature and although there is a lot of work I really enjoy it and it's good for my body my body is getting stronger because I walk a lot I work all day and then I come back and I do life assessments and this is this makes me I think it's so good for the body it strengthens the body and I also eat good food because I am buying my food from neighbors so I'm buying goat's milk and I buy uh, eggs from them and then I go to the local store and they also have local produce like yesterday and today I bought some strawberries I think they are local they are quite early for this time but they are so 
the smell is so strong of strawberries I don't think they can be imported from other countries they must be grown here but they are maybe some early variety I don't know but it, they were so lovely and today I washed my dog he didn't appreciate it he hates when I wash him and he hates when I brush him but I have to do that uh, and today was quite it, it wasn't warm yesterday and the day before was very warm so I was outside working but today it was cooler so in the morning I went for uh, water to buy water and then I was doing work at home and I'm also preparing to plant so I'm learning as much as I can how to plant different kind of vegetables how to plant each vegetable what soil it, wa it needs what kind of um, compost I have to put and all kinds of things as such so that's a lot of learning because I'm new at gardening but I really am determined to grow good crop this year because the year before the previous year 2019 I was here and I did um, some planting but it was more like out of interest it wasn't like I really wanted to grow my food I just wanted to see how if I'm able to grow some vegetables but now I realize how important it is to grow your own food because otherwise you will get just store-bought chemical food or if it's organic it's going to be probably imported from other countries and still it's not it's going to be expensive and still not as good as what you can um, you know what you can grow yourself so now I'm focused on that so I'm learning a lot and it's again so interesting and I find it actually meditative to work uh, to uh, organize seeds and I have some seedlings as you saw so to see seedlings growing it's just for me it's so relaxing and I never liked gardening it's just these few years this interest arose and now I'm I feel more and more close to the land and before it wasn't like this so this is something I really enjoy and it takes a lot of my time now but I like studying that so now my time consists of working on land, studying gardening and then doing astrology. So I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Take care.